Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and on this channel we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney. We have a question here from YouTube user Oralia G. And Oralia G says, question, would you recommend waiting to get fired to sue for retaliation or sue while you are still employed? My manager has been isolating me, excluding me from projects, wrote me up based on interactions we had, and then lied to justify the write-up, and then recently gave me a bad review. I never had any issues until after my complaint with HR. I was also not given a special bonus, which, should ha which I should have received based on last year's performance. End question. Okay. So, Aralia, real quick, we got to touch on retaliation because there's a lot of misinformation about retaliation. And I'm sure you don't need to hear this, but somebody else here in the video does. So we're going to do it anyways. A general complaint to HR does nothing for you, does not give rise to retaliation uh, claims in any way. Now, there are certainly things if you're complaining about wages, discrimination, failure to accommodate, right? There are things tied to protected classes or use of leave or wages or, or in certain contexts, whistleblowing that you can complain about to HR or to anyone in your company, and, and that can lock in protections against retaliation going forward. The ones we're going to discuss here are when you're complaining of discrimination, and that includes the whole breadth and scope of that, including like um, all forms of protected classes, all forms of accommodations, religious accommodation, disability accommodations, the whole, the whole kit and a ca 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 caboodle, as they say. Uh, that was my best goofy impression. It wasn't good. I failed you. Um, or sexual harassment, right? If you're complaining of any form of uh, sexual harassment or um, even a quid pro quo, anything along those lines, right? There's others. Somebody's going to hop in the comments and be like, well, that's not every form of retaliation. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you which form I'm talking about here. We're narrowing the scope of the discussion to make sure it's a meaningful discussion. Now, Aralia G, I'm assuming you engaged in either a complaint of discrimination in the workplace or a complaint of sexual harassment in the workplace, and that retaliation has flowed from that. Certainly, you're, you're listing a number of events that could qualify as retaliation, assuming they come in temporal proximity after your complaint, right? We have a video about temporal proximity on the channel. Your manager's isolated you. Retaliation. Excluded you from projects. Retaliation. Wrote you up. Retaliation. Lied to justify a write-up. Retaliation. Gave you a bad performance review. Retaliation. All of these things oh, took a bonus away from you. All, retaliation, right? Like all of these things could give rise to retaliation claim. And together, they're more convincing than any one of them would have been alone. So certainly, if you've engaged in the required protected activity, which is to complain about workplace discrimination or workplace sexual harassment, then if any of these events happened in short order after your complaint, you would have a potential retaliation claim. And then that retaliation claim gives rise to your question, should you wait to be fired and bring your claim after, or should you bring it while you're still there? And the answer is that there is tension between attorneys in this field about how they would prefer to run that case. I will give you my thoughts last because I, it's my channel. I'm going to give myself primacy. But I'll tell you how a lot of attorneys want to run that case. A lot of attorneys will tell you, yeah, go ahead and get fired. Give me a call. We'll bring a case. That will be one way to increase the value. And notice I said increase, not maximize the value of your claim. That is, that is a method to maximize the value of your claim. Some things may be less than ideal in that approach. So first and foremost, when you're getting fired, that sucks. That's hard. It's super hard in 2024. It's hard to obtain employment, uh, at least not comparable employment, right? It's just hard to make enough money to deal with the rising cost of living and inflation and everything else that's going on in this country right now. Um, even obtaining, you know, housing and food and paying your heating bill can, can be a bit pricey in 2024. So, you know, getting fired 
unexpectedly is tough. It's really hard on you. So right off the bat, that's not ideal for the client. But also waiting for the termination, the termination can take time. And it provides the employer room to maneuver, room to paper the file, right? They're already, they're doing that to you, right? So they're taking you off projects, which means you can't shine, and they're giving you bad reviews, and they're lying to justify write-ups. So if you've got bad write-ups going in your file, you've got bad reviews going in your file, you don't have access to good projects, you can't shine, and they're going to have a lot of success creating a narrative that you are a problem employee. And that can undermine the validity of your discrimination and retaliation claims. I'm not saying they'll be successful. I am saying you're giving them a lot of room to try with that approach. And I don't love that. Further, the human memory sucks. It's so bad. And the more time goes by, the worse your recollection and the recollection of your witnesses and the recollection of your bad actors, the worse it's going to be. And listen, you might say it's great that the defendants, the bad actors, the discriminators don't remember things. It's, It's not really because an answer of I don't recall doesn't do a lot of good for your case can be very difficult, right? So if you're starting to have your memories fade because the termination is taking a little while coming and your witnesses are starting to do things like, I don't know, move out of the state, find employment elsewhere, pass away, all of which can happen, or or just stop recollecting the things you want them to recollect, right? Like that's problematic. That's not going to be great for your case. So on your side, there's a bunch of bad things happening to the testimony portion of your case and on the other side humans forget things a lot humans especially forget things that they're ashamed of or things that are inconvenient for their economic well-being you might find the bad actors have forgotten that anything ever happened and all they really remember is that you got a couple of write-ups a couple of bad reviews you weren't on too many projects and then you were done And without a lot of great testimony and a lot of great documentation on your side, and oh, that's right, documentation has a certain tendency to disappear over time, and you didn't have a case going, so there was no discovery freeze in effect, so documentation that disappeared will not necessarily be construed against the employer. Hmm, this seems less than ideal. So... That approach of waiting for you to get fired to potentially increase the valuation of your case, that that is a viable approach. But as you can tell from my presentation here, it's not one that I subscribe to. I, I don't think that is the correct way to go about this. And what I would say to you is instead, use the trap that the legislature has given you, right? So you, you've made a complaint. You went to HR and you complained, presumably, of workplace discrimination, workplace sexual harassment, and your protections against retaliation slammed into place like a portcullis protecting a gate on some ancient castle, right? You you have some protections now. And anything negative done to you will be construed, potentially, that the employer is guilty, still proven innocent, of retaliation. And that will open up a third class of damages. So the employer will rightfully, if they're intelligent, be afraid of messing with you. And that's a beautiful place to be because while well, you're employed there, you're still earning. And if you have the the density of soul, the, the ability, the capacity to go to work and live in that tension every day, and not everyone does. And I'm not saying you should. I'm not even saying this is necessarily a desirable trait as a human being. But I've had many clients who could go to work after they started their case against their employer and happily go about their day and not be particularly bothered by the tension there. I've also got videos about clients who couldn't really stomach that and you know that was not not viable for them. But if you can do this, if you can have your case pending while you're still there, think about the dynamics of that. That employer is going to have a very difficult time firing you because you have protections against retaliation in play. 
And that employer is really worried because any idiot that works for them, whether they know about your case or not, might do something negative to you. And that negative thing they do to you might be really horrible. And it might make your retaliation claim larger. And so the potential for a large punitive damages verdict against the employer might then grow. The case can get worse, right? And they want to triage the case. They don't want it to get worse. They want it, they want it to get done, right? Generally speaking. And so you're there. And by being there, you continue to expose them to liability, just a gaping sore of liability that they can't deal with. And they can't really manage you that well because when they get aggressive with you and the way managers do, retaliation. Right. So it's a bad position to be in. It's a trap created by the law, probably unintentional, but let's let's not be bothered by that. If someone gives you a, a trap for your employer, you, you use it until someone takes it away from you. And I've been using it for about a decade now. So I would urge you to stay employed and, and bring your claims forward. And at mediation, what you might find, what you often will find, is that the employer's defense counsel will come and say, hey, we would never fire you because that would be retaliation. But you know, we'd be happy to pay you a premium to move on. I just don't know if this is working out. You feel we're discriminated against you, and we would never. We would never. We, and we would never, and we did not. But we do feel bad that you feel that way. And we just don't know if we can save the relationship. So why don't we give you a sum of money, perhaps a premium, to cover you for what you experienced and what you feel you experienced, what you feel was done to you, and, and give you some runway to find employment elsewhere. And we would never fire you, but but this would require you to leave, right? We're paying you to make an exit. We just we don't know if we can repair the relationship. So listen, in this confidential mediation setting, where this safe space exists, we can say to you that we would love to pay you to go. Will we fire you? Oh, no. But we'd love to pay you to go. And we'd love to pay you extra to do that if you're willing to agree to that. And we'd like some other terms depending on the jurisdiction we're in. We might want confidentiality. We might want mutual non-disparagement. Uh, we'd love to give you a, a reference. We, we're not trying to we don't, we don't actually care about you. We don't care about where you go to work or anything of like that. We just want this case over. So, yeah, uh, reference is fine. And uh, let's part ways. And that, to my mind, is a lower risk way to maximize the valuation of such a case than waiting for the termination. I want to be upfront. Many attorneys will disagree with me strenuously. There are many attorneys in this field who, f who want only cases that end in termination. There are many attorneys in this field who will tell you, call me when you're terminated. I think this is foolish and short-sighted, and I disagree with them. But those are still going to be good attorneys. I'm not saying they're bad attorneys. I'm just saying that on this one particular point, we have a difference of tactics. And I'm sure they have many good reasons, and I'm sure I have not properly set forth their arguments for why they approach things the way they do, because I think those arguments are doo-doo. And I have no interest in setting forth their argument. They should start a YouTube channel and help people and, and set forth their arguments. And I would love, I would be thrilled to have them on the channel and link to their channel and have a little debate about how we run that case. That would be a magical. But I suspect we're not going to do that. Maybe, maybe some little content. Comment down below if you want to, if you want to debate how we, how we run retaliation cases. I would be thrilled. It'll be a friendly debate. I, and I, and I, I will hear you out. Like, I will. I know that I seem like a crazy person, and I am. But if you are passionate about helping clients, that's going to be a good faith discussion. Trust me. Like, I, I sit around having those discussions at length a lot with people who care, right? And if you want to do that, I will ship you your beverage of choice. We can get on a recorded Zoom wherever you are in the country and make it happen. I'd be thrilled. Anyways, Aralia G, on the, on the plus side, you're really thinking well about this. Your tactical depth of knowledge and consideration seems to be off the charts. 
So I applaud you. Um, and I hope for your great success. And I hope that you trap your employer or that you get terminated in the way that you want to get terminated at a time that is convenient to you. And either way, you get a fat check, whichever whichever path you choose to go down or whichever path is forced upon you. <sighs> Everybody, give me your thoughts below in the comments. What do you think? Who do you think is right? What do you think is a better approach? Obviously, it is a little situational. Obviously, not everybody can stay at their place of employment. That can be nerve-wracking and horrible and not the right thing for many people. I just want to stress, like, if you get terminated, it's still a good case. Or if you just don't have the stomach to stay at this job while the case plays out, that can still be a good case. You don't have to. It's not required that you trap them, right? Like, it's not required. I think it's a good path. It's a good tactical option. It's not the only, and it's not required, right? So discussion down below. If the video is helpful, I must tell you to like, subscribe, comment down below, share the channel so it can grow. Thank you, everyone. Take care.